Hello, good evening, welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. I'm Brett and today it's another adventure with the man called X. Tonight I'm looking out the window at clear blue skies with a light breeze from our part-time home here in the Costa Calada region of southern Spain. Been a busy old day today, well not really, we've kind of spent most of it around the pool. We've got friends over, Dave and Sarah. I'm missing the boys, George and William have had a lovely weekend away in Minehead with their grandma and granddad and Lola's had a lovely time with Nanny and Bamps down in Devon so it's all been going on for everybody everybody's having a little bit of a holiday but it's all nice this evening we're heading down to Matheron or the port of Matheron to one of our favorite restaurants so that'd be nice so if you want to come and join us well look do drop us a little line send me a message through one of our social media and I'll make sure I'll tell you exactly where we're going oh which reminds me we've got a host of social media Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And you'll find our Patreon supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. Our sister podcast is called Sunday Night Mystery. And if you check Amazon, you could buy our book of the same name. Tonight, it's another episode of The Man Called X. This one is called Ashes to Ashes, first broadcast on the 2nd of November, 1947. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. In a government office in Washington, D.C., a moving picture is being shown to a select group of men. A top-secret film made at heavily guarded radar testing fields in the Arizona desert. Important test of the electronic brain in this radar-guided airplane is the landing. No personnel was aboard during these shots. The electronic brain performed all functions... Mr. Thurston, the possibilities of the electronic brain are almost limitless. Yeah, Colonel. For both good and evil. Why, what do you mean by that, Thurston? I just think what might happen if that little device fell into the wrong hands. The men you see now are some of the foreign scientists brought to this country to work with us in developing this remarkable invention. They, as well as Colonel, our own experts... that man in the film, left at the end of the second row. Do you know that man? Why, yes, Thurston, that's Professor Hosmer. Hosmer? A famous French scientist now working at the Arizona testing grounds. Colonel, the, uh, three years ago in France, I was caught in a bombing raid. So was Professor Hosmer. He didn't come out alive. Of course Hosmer's alive, Ken. And his papers, when he came over here, were in perfect order. Chief, I tell you, I saw his laboratory in Cali blown to bits. His death was never reported for security reasons. Well, then who's the man you saw in that picture? Uh, the one supposed to be Hosmer? That's just it. I don't know. That's why we got to check on this thing. Yes, Ken, maybe you've got something Listen, there. The electronic brain is our secret now. For use in peacetime aviation. But if it got into the wrong hands, it could be turned into a terrible weapon. For destroying lives of saving them. Mm. Ken, you're right. Okay then, Chief. I'm heading for Arizona. What do you want, please? They told me Professor Hausman lives here. I'd like to see him. Who are you? My name's Ken Thurston. Ken Fi- Come in, please. Oh, thanks. Well, looks like you're doing some packing. Photographic gear, doesn't it? That's right, Mr. Thurston. Oh, pretty valuable stuff, too. That uh, infrared equipment, for instance. Mr. Thurston, perhaps you'd care to state your business here? It's with Professor Hausman. Maybe I'd better tell him. He's not around right now. 
I'm Jean Alexander, his secretary. I'm sure I can handle it for him. Oh, I don't mind waiting. I'll stick around till he gets back. You'll have a long wait, Mr. Thurston. Professor Hosmer died last night. Oh? Well, pretty sudden, wasn't it? Very. Heart attack. There was nothing his physician, Dr. Brenner, could do to save him. It was a great shock to us. Yeah, I can see it's still a tough way to talk about it. Took you long enough to tell me. At least I should uh, pay my last respects. Where can I... Where can I see him? I'm afraid you can't, Mr. Thurston. According to the wishes of his sister, Evelyn Hosmer, the body has been cremated. The ashes were shipped to her in San Francisco this afternoon. Oh. Well, uh, thanks anyway. I'd, I'd say goodbye, only I think I'll be seeing you again. Quite soon, Miss Alexander. Hmm. Will you? I don't think I'd advise you to try it, Mr. X. Flight 7 for San Francisco, now loading at Ramp 3. Flight 7, Hello. now Mr. loading Thurston. at Ramp 3. Mr. Thurston, wait for me. Well, what the... Don't, don't go, wait. Oh, no. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hey, Gonzales, Schmidt. What are you doing in Phoenix? Ha, what a question. I'm here to stop you from taking that airplane to San Francisco. What else? What? Mr. X, it's positively official. The chief sent me. That yarn's wearing thin, Pagon. Better get another. But the chief did send me, Mr. Thurston. He learned that some professor kicked the bucket, so you didn't have to go hunting for him no more. And won't you back in New York? Well, well, you'll have to wait a while, Pagon. I've got to help the poor bereaved sister, Professor Hosmer, bear up under her sorrow when she receives his ashes. Huh? The chief won't take that for an excuse. Oh, I think he will, Pagon, when he remembers that electronic brain and the fact that our files show Hosmer hasn't got a sister. <laughs> Why are we flying to San Francisco? It's the wrong direction. New York is on the West Coast. If you don't think this is the right direction, ask Miss Jean Alexander. You mean that cute little cookie sitting up the head there? Yeah. See you later, Pagan. Mr. Thurston! Hello, Miss Alexander. I was wondering if you were going to annoy me, Mr. Thurston. If you want me to say that he stops annoying you, Jean. That won't be necessary, Dr. Brennan. He's going away. Dr. Brenner? Oh, yes. Professor Hasmar's position. Well? Must have bothered you quite a bit to sign his death certificate, or did it? Rest assured, Thurston, there was nothing wrong with that diagnosis. I'd stake my reputation on it. A post-mortem would easily bear me out. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Pretty safe bet, isn't it, Doctor? I never have heard of a successful autopsy on a pile of ashes. Pagan, you stay here while I go to see Evelyn Hauser. If Dr. Brenner drives up and starts shooting, just holler. And I mean holler. Don't you worry about the thing, Mr. Thurston Alva. Huh? Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, you know me? But of course. I have been expecting you. Come in, won't you? I never refuse a lady's invitation when it's backed up by a cold automatic. You are very sensible, Mr. Thurston. The living room is that way. You will go first, please. I see your brother got here all right, Miss Hosmer. You are referring to the urn containing his ashes, no doubt. It arrived quite safely. Oh, so did that projection machine. For picture slides, isn't it? Part of my dear brother's photographic equipment. What's it doing here? You do not have to answer that, my dear. <laughs> Hello. When did you come in? A moment ago, my dear Thurston, but before we continue this conversation, you have seen my gun, no doubt. Lest you are tempted to indulge in foolish heroics, please turn your back to me. Why not? Thank you, Mr. X. Uh, oh, what are you doing here? Who are you? My dear Evelyn, that's nothing for you to be alarmed about. I'm your dear dead brother, Professor Hartsman. Brother? I've merely dropped in to collect my ashes. <laughs> to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. 
It's a few minutes after the startling appearance of Professor Harzma in the apartment of his sister, Evelyn. Ken Thurston is just starting to come. Uh, uh... Wake up, Mr. Thurston. Please wake up. Why do you have to lie there like, like a dead corpse? Well, well, a pagan. That's right, that's right, Mr. Thurston. A pagan. Where? Where are the others? That Evelyn Harsma came running downstairs a few moments ago with her grandfather. So I came running up and found you out like a dark light. Yeah. <clears throat> Only that grandfather was Professor Harsma. But he's dead. The real professor, yeah. He died in Cali three years ago. The man you saw was his half-brother. Oh. He came over here on the dead professor's papers and wangled his way into the electronic brain project. Huh? He was once suspected of selling military secrets to the enemy. Could be he's still at it. Oh, corpses, half-brothers, electrical brains. Mr. Thurston. Look, look there. See the metal tag on that projection machine? Tag? Oh. Hmm? Uh, Patterson's Golden Gate Photo Service? Yeah. That's where we're going to answer your questions. Thurston, there's no lights in the picture shop. Nobody home. Patterson's delivery truck parked out there. So he's probably around somewhere. Try this back door. Come on. It's dark like the inside of coal here. This flashlight will help. <laughs> Look at this place. What a mess. Cameras. Hey! Mr. Mr. Thurston. Hey, gone. that's Evelyn Hosmer. Oh. But who did it? And why was she killed here? Maybe that projector will tell us. Looks like she was operating when she was shot. Still a transparency in the film holder. Let's see. Look. There's a picture on the screen. It's that luscious little lady who was on the plane with us. Yeah, so it is. And look at that lovely bathing suit she's wearing. Mr. Thurston, did you have to turn off this light so soon? Let's switch on another one, Pagar. This one. Huh? What's that? An infrared tube attached to this projector. And I have an idea. Let's see. Double feature is no good, Mr. X. This one's got nothing but squares and lines in it with funny figures. That's an infrared photo of a blueprint, Pagon. A blueprint of part of the design of the electronic brain. It is? Yeah. Paste it between two identical ordinary transparencies. Takes infrared light to show it up. Imagine that. Hasma made infrared photos of all the plans, then cooked up a fake death to clear himself of any suspicion. And the urn contained negatives instead of ashes. And a perfect way to ship him safely. <laughs> wasn't so safe for that sister Evelyn. She wasn't his sister. Just someone they'd hired. Because she had the same name. To help him tripping up anyone who got suspicious and might have checked on him. Yes? Mr. Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston, somebody's coming in the front door. Yeah, quiet, quiet. Okay, I've got the negative. Now to the back door fast. nothing in the machine. Hello, this is Brenner. I'm at the shop. There's no negative in that projection machine. All right, I'll look around. We haven't any time to waste. I'll drive the truck over as soon as I make a final check. Okay, Pig, well, I've heard yes. enough. Let's go. That's all right. Yes. Pig, I'm going to get into the back of the Patterson Company's truck. There's a chance I'll be hitchhiking a ride to where Hasbro is and the plans. What am I supposed to do? Call the chief. Tell him to send out a coast-wide arrest order for Hasma and Brenner on a charge of espionage. Now beat it. Okay, Mr. Thurston, you can depend on it. Yeah. Oh, it's too dark in here to see, but that perfume tells me I've got company in this truck. Is that right, Miss Alexander? Yes, that's quite right. Why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? Mr. X? Go on, Jean. Can't Professor Hosmer plan this fourth step to protect himself from enemies? Foreign agents who'd known him overseas. They were after him because of his knowledge of the electronic plane mechanism. And I think Dr. Brenner is one of those enemies. That's why you followed him to the Photoshop? And hid in this truck? Yes, yes, I've got to find out the truth. 
Professor Hosmer's sake. Hmm. What about me? How do you think I fit into the picture? I'm not sure, but as long as we're both trailing Dr. Brenner, I'm willing to work with you. After that, I... Wait a minute. I think he's stopping at last. Yes. Yeah. Ken, what if Brenner comes back here before we get out? Well, somebody's liable to get hurt. We'll know in a minute. Looks like he's gone. Come on, Jean. Fog out here. It's so thick you can't see five feet away. Where could we be? An hour out of San Francisco. All this fog, surf, and the smell of pines. We could be somewhere near Half Moon Bay. Quite, quite. So <laughs> Professor Hosmer. We are at Half Moon Bay. Unfortunately, the fog prevents you from seeing it, but I can tell you that it's a beautiful place in which to live. And even a beautiful place in which to die. Have you had any luck with those ropes, Ken? Not yet. It's so dark in this room, I can't even see if there's anything around that might help. Do you think he'll keep us in this old house very long? I doubt it. The films are no good to him until he gets them out of the country somehow to sell. If we... Listen. What's that? Shortwave radio set in the next room. Now listen. Oh. Do you know what it means, Ken? Yes, listen. Yeah. Rendezvous. South American freighter. Down the coast. At a place they're calling CR. CR? Yeah, yeah. He signed off. And he's made his contact. He won't need us anymore. Looks like it. Our only chance is to get out of these ropes before... Ken, who is it? Easy, Jean, easy. Mr. Thurston. Pago. Mr. Thurston, then you are here. How'd you... Oh, never mind. Save it for later. Get out your knife. Cut these ropes. It's as good as done. You realize, of course, Mr. Thurston, I couldn't leave you on the perch that way. So I followed you. Believe me, that taxi cost a fortune. There. Good. Now cut jeans. Ah, the cute cook in a bathing suit. A pleasure. What did the chief say when you called him? When I called who? So you didn't call him. I might have known. But, Mr. Thurston, the Dr. Brenner was driving the truck right away. You wouldn't want me to desert my... Ken! Come on. They came for the next room. Stay behind me, Jean. Well. Professor Hosmer. Dead. Yeah. Brenner didn't miss. Brenner? Sure. Hear that car? He's beating it. Come on, Pagan. We're going after him. Sure. My taxi. But, Ken, with all that fog out there, how can you tell where he's going? That's not too tough, Gene. He's going to meet a South American freighter at a rendezvous called CR. Pagong, the Cape Receiver Lighthouse. And you think that Brenner the Good is out here? It figures. Down the coast from Half Moon Bay. CR for Cape Receiver, and there's his car. Here. Here. Look out to sea. There where the wind's lifting the fog. You mean that little light out there? Blinking on and off? Yeah. The freighter signaling its position. And there, up in the tower, an answering light. That's where Brenner is. Come on, Pagong. But, Mr. Thurston, we haven't got any guns. And he likes to shoot people. Why don't we go back to Half Moon Bay and join that lovely gym? Quiet. We're going into this lighthouse. There's no lights in here. Except from the top of the place. Yeah. The light tower. And that's where Brenner is. Where's the lighthouse keeper? This is an automatic light. Come on. Up the stairway. But, but it's two stories high up there. I get dizzy in high places. A kleptomanic, you understand? Uh, oh, Mr. Thurston. Who is it? Who's down there? <laughs> it's him. It's him. He's seen us. Who's there, I said? It's Thurston, Brenner. Thurston? That's right. I'm coming after those films. You're wrong, Thurston. You'll never live to get them. You're a fool, Thurston. You can't climb those stairs and live. All right, you ask for it. (laughs) 
You're mad, Thurston. Go back. All right, you've had your last chance. This time you're close enough so I can't miss. Uh. Mr. Thurston! So you wouldn't listen to me. All right, you see how you got paid off. You were a sucker, Thurston. You... Oh. No, you can't. That bullet struck home. I know it did. Thurston! Three shots at Hosmer. Three at me. Count them, Brenner. That gun of yours is empty. All right. Now let's have those films. No. No, I've got an ace up my sleeve. The sea ladder out on the light walk. Come back here, Brenner. You'll never make it down the ladder in that wind. You haven't won yet, Thurston. Brenner, that ladder's as slippery as ice. You can't make it. Goodbye, Thurston. I've taken the last trick after all, Mike. Thurston! My foot slipped. Help, I'm gonna fall. I'm going to... Yeah, the last trick, Brenner. The very last. Mr. Thurston! Mr. Thurston! Oh, oh, there's blood on your sleeve. Oh, I'm all right, I'm all right. Oh, the Dr. Brenner. What happened to him? Where'd he go? Into the sea, Pagan. Then he's gone for good. And Professor Hosma is gone, too. Ha! There's nobody else left for us to worry about. Oh, no, Pagan. Huh? As long as there are men on earth like Hosmer and Brenner, there's plenty to worry about. It's not the film they... they killed for that matters. It's a more tragic film. The greed that covers the eyes of men like that. Blinded them to the fact that peace... peace is the salvation of mankind. They've got to be made to see that. All of them. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, our story is called Written in the Sands. It's packed full of excitement and mystery, and I think you'll like it. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return without a cold as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. And so, until next week, same time, same station, this is Ken Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with the man called X. And with it being a Monday, we've got comedy tomorrow with Hancock's Half Hour. It's going to be brilliant because, well, you know, they always are. Don't forget, we've got uh, plenty of social media, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And did I mention we've got a book? It's on Amazon. It's called Sunday Night Mystery. You know you'll love it because, well, because I wrote it and... You and I, well, we think the same, don't we? Because we're kind of, we're almost like the same people. Do you not think? Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week. Each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.